The story began on a battlefield where a young lad by the name of Boyden Porto Panjovia found himself facing three girls standing before him. Boyden inquired about their desires to mentor or train someone as their master. He then altered the tone of his voice, remarking that they all appeared inexperienced in this regard, suggesting that they refrain from such actions, and promptly moved to strike them. To everyone's astonishment, one of the girls delivered a powerful slap, sending Boyden flying. Boyden's teammates were shocked by this turn of events because, in their eyes, Boyden was the kingdom's top knight and possessed a splendid beard. How could someone of his caliber be easily defeated by a single blow? Here, we are introduced to the names of the three girls. The first girl's name is Ryoni Bernicht, known as the Dragon King's Destruction Warlord of Dragonia. As Ryoni overheard the conversation among Boyden's teammates, she grew curious to learn the name of the boy she had just struck. The second girl's name was Yudmila Hailstorm, renowned as the High Elf Arc Wizard of Disaster. Yudmila was discontented because Ryoni hadn't allowed them the opportunity to impart a lesson to Boyden. Now, the third and final girl, Tolomia Cleblate, held the title of the apocalyptic heretical cleric of the Super Vampire Clan. Tolomia proposed the idea that perhaps all of them were exhausted, which might explain why they were not finding suitable companions. These three female masters were, in fact, considered the strongest in the world. Ryoni grew anxious at the prospect of encountering another unqualified youngster, and Tolomia concurred, expressing her reluctance to mentor such an individual. Certainly, let's delve deeper into the abilities of these girls. Ryoni was a formidable fighter with incredibly powerful fists, capable of shattering mountains with a single punch. Yudmila excelled in magic, particularly her mastery of mazes, allowing her to defeat thousands of men simultaneously with her spells. Lastly, Tolomia possessed both beauty and the deadly skill of reverse recovery magic, which could bring about the downfall of her adversaries. Returning to the past for a moment, Boyden inquired about their reasons for seeking a disciple, considering their remarkable beauty and immense power, which could easily grant them whatever they desired. Suddenly, Boyden's armor shattered, leaving him exposed, which shocked the girls. As Boyden questioned their reaction, he himself came to the realization that despite their strength and longevity, all three of them were still virgins. While Boyden was speaking, he received a powerful kick from Ryoni that sent him flying into the distance. Yudmila mentioned that dominating rude men was a straightforward task, and Tolomia added that she preferred avoiding unnecessary complications. The scene then shifted to a few months prior, where Ryoni's frustration mounted as they continued to struggle in their search for a suitable companion. Ryoni expressed her frustration, noting that all the guys they had encountered had lacked skills and held lowly status, relying solely on their appearance and words. Tolomia attempted to convey that their strengths shouldn't diminish the worth of others. Meanwhile, Yudmila shared her criterion for a partner, emphasizing that the man should be at least on par with her in terms of abilities, if not stronger. Ryoni agreed with Yudmila's statement, acknowledging that they would have to protect her if they ever found a guy who met their requirements. Tolomia tried to reassure them, believing that the day of a miraculous encounter would eventually arrive. It was evident that the girls had set exceptionally high standards in their quest for a partner. Tolomia began to contemplate the likelihood of finding someone both more skilled than her and with a compatible personality. However, Yudmila interjected, asserting that even if such a person existed, she wouldn't allow them to take the lead. Ryoni chuckled and teased Yudmila, suggesting that she was afraid of coming in second place. Yudmila expressed her unwillingness to compromise on these matters. Suddenly, they had a collective realization that if they couldn't find someone who met their criteria, perhaps they should collectively groom a man for that role. Although they each had their own motives, they found common ground in this idea. As a result, they ultimately made the decision to embark on a quest to find a future husband, or in other words, to search for a disciple. The scene shifted to a moment in time when all the girls were enjoying their lunch and engaged in conversation. Yudmila mentioned that they had been searching for a month, yet they hadn't found a suitable man. Ryoni then inquired about their next destination, suggesting a visit to the Yuruka Empire. However, Yudmila disagreed, pointing out that they were considered wanted criminals in that region. Ryoni elaborated on her perspective, suggesting that visiting the Yuruka Empire would be a good idea because they would likely encounter numerous challengers, allowing them to select a suitable man from the contenders. However, Tolomia wasn't entirely pleased with this plan, believing that the men in that region were already skilled veterans and wouldn't leave much room for their own growth. Ryoni grew frustrated with Tolomia's objections, but then she overheard some intriguing news. A brave descendant was enrolling in the school of Basgrubia. The boy sitting with them inquired about the term Telomia Bravitolomia, and whether it referred to the individual who had defeated the devil a month ago. 
the first girl confirmed this and explained that it was also an opportunity for the brave descendant to find a wife. It was a tradition at the school to find a compatible partner in order to produce strong offspring. Upon hearing this information, all three girls became excited and began discussing the opportunities at Baskrubia School. According to their knowledge, the school attracted very young and talented individuals. Rioni proposed a plan to her teammates, suggesting that they either find the brave descendant or engage in a fight with one of their potential enemies to assess their combat skills. They prepared themselves for the journey, and Yudmila mentioned that she had some matters to discuss with the dean. Tolomia was delighted that their trip would now be more worthwhile. Together, they embarked on their journey to the city of Baskrubia. Upon reaching Baskrubia, it became evident that the city was renowned for being the home of the world's largest magical power, the Abyssal Sea of the Trees, and was considered sacred by adventurers. Within the city, there was a noticeable sense of hustle and bustle due to the ongoing harvest festival. Food vendors plied their trade, while people eagerly purchased instruments and weapons. Others were excitedly anticipating a professional ceremony taking place in the amphitheater. The scene transitioned to the school of Amiria, where they encountered the dean named Salaria. Salaria expressed deep surprise upon hearing that the three girls had come to their school. She sought confirmation, questioning whether they were certain that the visitors were who they claimed to be. The staff member assured Salaria that she was telling the truth, emphasizing that the intimidating aura of the visitors reminded her of three S-rank warriors. Furthermore, she revealed that the three individuals were currently having tea in Salaria's office. This news left Salaria both tense and furious with the girls. Salaria instructed the worker to find a way to remove the girls from the premises, and she would feign ignorance about their visit, citing her busy schedule with the Harvest Festival. However, the worker informed her that one of the girls had issued a warning, suggesting that if they were kept waiting any longer, the school building could be in jeopardy. Upon hearing the warning, Salaria became apprehensive about the situation and realized the seriousness of it. Ultimately, she had no choice but to agree to meet with them. She instructed her worker to convey that she would be available to meet them in 30 minutes. The worker, curious, asked why Salaria didn't go to meet them right away. Salaria, still rattled by the situation, grew furious at the worker's question. She explained that she needed time to prepare for the meeting. During this exchange, a boy approached and called the dean in a hushed voice. Salaria seized him and firmly informed him that his expulsion from the school due to an emergency was a final decision, and he should consider pursuing a different career path besides adventuring. Salaria hurriedly made her way to her office, with the boy desperately trying to stop her and asking for the reason behind his expulsion. As she reached her office door, she hesitated for a moment, hoping that somehow the news was false or that the trio of girls had already left. However, it turned out to be the exact opposite, as they were still waiting for her inside her office. As Solaria entered the room, all the girls fixed their gaze upon her and expressed their discontent with her lateness. However, Solaria wasted no time and immediately inquired about the purpose of their visit. Rioni, visibly displeased with Solaria's demeanor, questioned whether the dean had forgotten the favors they had done for the school. Solaria, in a fit of anger, reminded the girls of their S-rank adventurer status, but accused them of consistently leaving a mess behind for the guild members to clean up. She also emphasized that she was incredibly busy and didn't have spare time for them. Solaria then pondered the recurring disruptions during the Harvest Festival and decided to ask the reason for their visit hoping to resolve the matter swiftly and send them on their way. Upon hearing their request for a descendant, Solaria became alarmed and questioned the nature of this unusual request. Rioni clarified that they had heard about the arrival of a brave descendant and wanted to hire him for training purposes. Udmiller requested Solaria to allow them to meet the new kings, further increasing Solaria's tension and fear. Solaria, now deeply concerned, asked about their actual intentions. Tolomia explained that they simply wanted the brave descendant to become strong and skilled. However, Solaria had a strong suspicion that Tolomia was being dishonest. Taking into account the facts about the girls, Solaria arrived at the conclusion that they were definitely planning something else. She expressed her concerns, acknowledging that even if their intentions were good, their personalities posed a problem. Solaria then explained that the Brave was considered the trump card of the human race, and if the girls were to get their hands on him, it could spell the end of the world. Rioni questioned Solaria's silence, wondering if she was intending to keep a secret about the Brave from them. Tolomia, standing up, expressed her willingness to interrogate the Dean if necessary. However, Yudmila intervened, advising them to avoid using threatening methods and to stay on the Dean's good side. Solaria feigned shock to avoid answering their questions. Suddenly, a powerful explosion rocked the city, capturing their attention. 
The four of them rushed to the window, filled with concern, trying to understand the cause of the explosion and what had just occurred. In the city, chaos ensued as people frantically rushed to save themselves. Someone in the midst of the commotion urged everyone to step aside, recognizing that the situation was deteriorating rapidly. Meanwhile, the boy from the school who had approached Solaria earlier was now seen lying on the ground, gripped by fear. The boy on the ground watched in terror as something emerged from the fog, and suddenly, a monstrous creature burst forth, emitting a deafening roar. The monster, known as the Poison Slime Hydra, began wreaking havoc and destroying nearby areas. Inside the school office, everyone was in shock at the sight of this formidable and dangerous creature. Solaria was deeply concerned about the monstrous size of the creature, noting that while dangerous classes typically ranged up to 8, this situation appeared to be a Class 9 emergency. She anxiously questioned why such a threat had to arrive, as it would require the entire nation's army to defend against it. The trio of girls grew furious at the thought of the monster potentially eliminating their husband candidates, prompting them to take off on a flight towards the creature. Solaria, upon hearing the mention of potential husbands, couldn't believe what she was hearing from them. As the monster continued its destructive rampage and people fled in panic, the boy found himself stuck in the middle of the chaos, desperately calling for help in sheer terror. The monster was closing in on him when suddenly Yudmila appeared and unleashed her highest grade of ice magic to intervene. Yudmila went even further, invoking her magic of absolute zero. A small explosion occurred, causing people nearby to be thrown back slightly. The intense battle between the trio of girls and the monster raged on, leaving everyone in awe and wonder at the extraordinary events unfolding before them. Amidst the battle, Ryoni attempted to boost Yudmila's confidence by suggesting that she could cast even more potent ice magic than before. However, Yudmila explained that the monster had a formidable resistance, and if she used a stronger spell, it would likely only freeze the surface, potentially endangering the civilians as well. Ryoni grew frustrated as her attacks seemed to have little effect on the monster, thanks to its impressive regeneration abilities. Yudmila reminded Ryoni of the monster's poisonous nature, cautioning against making any punctures that could harm civilians. Concerned about Tolomia's well-being, they both inquired about her condition, hoping she was safe. Tolomia reassured them that she was fine and explained that she had been contemplating whether her vexing skill would be effective against the monster, especially from the distance they were at. She seemed to be evaluating her options for dealing with the creature. Yudmila admitted uncertainty about the plan, but she agreed it was their best option. Tolomia then used her magic, propelling herself towards the monster's surface. Upon arrival, she reassured them that it was a safe landing and revealed that everything had gone according to her plan. Tolomia initiated her vexing skill magic on the monster, and to everyone's surprise, bubbles began to form within the creature. It became evident that her attack was causing the monster considerable discomfort, and pain. Solaria realized that the trio of girls, despite their formidable abilities, would go to great lengths to protect the civilians during their battle with the monster, potentially causing more harm to the city. With this in mind, she made the decision to provide them with support in order to minimize the damage to the city. Solaria, in the midst of the ongoing battle, was approached by another worker who reported a new problem. She initially assumed it was related to the existing monster, but to her surprise, the worker revealed that they had received confirmation of a large group of monsters, numbering around 4,000, heading towards them from the abyssal sea of trees. The worker explained that they didn't know the exact number of dangerous creatures among them, but it was essentially a monster stampede approaching. This news added a new layer of complexity to the already dire situation. Solaria was filled with anger upon hearing this news. She questioned the observation team's earlier reports, as they had claimed that there was nothing unusual in the morning. Now, facing a massive group of monsters approaching the city, she was deeply concerned and frustrated with the situation. Solaria issued clear orders to her worker, recognizing that they had no choice but to leave the poison slime hydra to the trio of girls. She instructed him to gather all B-rank adventurers to the north side of the city, and to mobilize all C-class and lower-ranked adventurers to focus on rescuing the city's residents. The worker agreed and swiftly began organizing the response efforts. Solaria couldn't help but reflect on the chaotic turn of events during their festival day. Meanwhile, in the midst of the ongoing battle between the trio of girls and the monster, Tolomia continued her vexing magic attacks. Yumila, however, decided to step up her offensive by utilizing all four basic attributes in her attack. The intensity of their battle against the monster escalated. 
Yudmila unleashed her powers, combining Quad Maze magic and elemental bullet magic to assault the monster. Simultaneously, Tolomia relentlessly struck the creature with her vexing attack. The sustained assault eventually resulted in a powerful explosion within the monster's body, signifying that their combined efforts were taking a toll on the formidable foe. Tolomia grew tense as the monster's core emerged in an unexpected location, different from what she had hoped for. Yudmila began to ponder the challenging situation they were facing, realizing that if they left the core to strike at it, they might risk losing the battle altogether. Their predicament left them with a difficult decision to make. Yudmila made a decisive call, stating that someone among them needed to target the monster's core while the others kept it distracted. The understanding spread among them, and Ryoni felt a sense of relief as they swiftly resolved this critical issue, aligning their strategy to take down the creature. A massive vexing circle materialized above the monster's head, catching the trio of girls by surprise. Simultaneously, the Hydra unleashed a high-level roar that began to affect the citizens in the vicinity. The trio of girls realized that the panic induced by the roar could potentially be fatal for the people, and they desperately searched for a way to assist and protect them. Suddenly, another girl arrived on the scene and confidently claimed that she could handle the situation and finish off the monster. The trio of girls became curious about the newcomer's identity and wondered if she was a reinforcement sent by Solaria. As the monster broke a building that threatened to fall on the citizens, the new girl intervened, expertly slashing the structure to prevent harm to the people below. During her heroic efforts to save the citizens, the new girl became trapped by the monster. Tension filled the air as everyone shouted her name, referring to her as Tolomia Mrs. Brave. Tolomia this revelation left the trio of girls momentarily bewildered, as they hadn't expected the brave to be a girl. The unexpected turn of events added a layer of complexity to the situation. As the girls discussed the brave and their expectations, they couldn't ignore the fact that this young girl possessed extraordinary power. With the monster roaring at full strength once more, the trio of girls understood that the situation was dire. Ioni made the decision that they would break their usual rules in order to save the citizens and confront the monster head-on. Suddenly, a boy appeared, brandishing a sword in his hand, and began advancing toward the monster's core. While Ryoni was discussing the idea of finding another body part to target, they were all taken aback by the unexpected sight of this boy heading directly towards the monster's core, possibly with the intention of attacking it. Ryoni became increasingly anxious as she observed the boy, and upon closer inspection, she realized that he was a 14-year-old human boy with all his skills at a level of zero. The trio of girls grew even more concerned, as this inexperienced boy with no skills was determined to strike at the monster's core, a task that seemed almost impossible given his current capabilities. Ryoni informed everyone that Cross's status had been reset to zero. Tolomia became tense, realizing that this act meant he was in danger. Ryoni then instructed Tolomia and Yudmila to use all their abilities to save Cross. Cross intended to attack them, seeking to end it all without further sacrifices. However, to his surprise, the Hydra monster spotted him and hurled him a great distance. As the monster prepared to strike Cross, Yudmila suddenly intervened, utilizing her freezing magic to halt the impending attack. Both Tolomia and Yudmila attempted to engage the Hydra monster, while Cross managed to rise once more, determined to strike at the monster's core. The monster let out a roar, but Ryoni, in a fit of fury, arrived and demanded its silence, launching an attack against it. As Cross drew near to the core, his body began to feel dizzy, overwhelmed by the monster's aura and relentless roar. The creature was actively resisting his approach. Witnessing Cross's struggle, Mrs. Brave considered assisting him but the intensity of the monster's roar made her feel faint as well. To the monster's astonishment, Cross rallied once more, rising to his feet and preparing to strike at the core. However, just as he was about to land the blow, the monster's appendages unexpectedly seized him. Ignoring his own well-being, Cross furiously continued his assault on the core. As the core was destroyed, the monster let out a howl of agony and began to slowly vanish. The trio observed this spectacle witnessing the creature break apart into pieces as it faded away. The intensity of its howls caused every citizen in the vicinity to lose consciousness. Ryoni rushed over to Cross, deeply concerned about his condition. Upon seeing the severity of his injuries, she angrily instructed Tolomia to employ her recovery magic. It was evident that the monster had severed a significant portion of Cross's body. Ryoni implored Cross to hang on, emphasizing that as long as he wasn't dead, Tolomia could heal him. In a weak voice, Cross inquired about the hero's well-being, showing concern for him. 
Just then, the courageous hero appeared in the distance, and upon spotting him, Cross mustered a faint smile before losing consciousness. Ryoni questioned the brave hero, inquiring if Cross had been her escort. The hero denied it and began to cry, apologizing for her carelessness and expressing her hope that Cross would be okay. Ryoni was taken aback, realizing the extent to which Cross had gone to save the hero. Ryoni was deeply impressed by Cross's selflessness, acknowledging that he had risked his life to save the hero even though he wasn't her official escort and had no significant abilities. Ryoni praised Cross for his extraordinary courage. Tolomia declared her decision to personally train Cross, and together they announced that they had found their disciple. The scene transitioned to a few hours later when Cross began to hear voices praising him for his actions. As he slowly opened his eyes and woke up in bed, Ryoni was overjoyed to see him awake. She had been deeply concerned because he had been unresponsive for a while. Startled by Ryoni's proximity, Cross felt a surge of fear. However, Ryoni introduced herself and disclosed that she was an S-class hunter. Cross became even more bewildered and anxious upon hearing this. To reassure him, Ryoni displayed her status plate, but Cross hesitated and first sought permission to look at it. Cross was in complete shock as he learned that Dragonians were a formidable race of Dragonuts and renowned combatants in the world. Discovering that Ryoni was not only a Dragonian but also an S-rank hunter, which was a rank held by only a total of nine adventurers worldwide, left him astounded. Cross felt anxious, wondering why an adventurer of Ryoni's caliber had any business with him. He inquired about his current location and expressed concern for the citizens. Ryoni reassured him and asked him to stay calm, promising to explain everything from the beginning. Ryoni explained that the house served as their base, and they had brought Cross there because the church was already full. Cross expressed sadness for the injured people he had seen, but Ryoni reassured him by stating that there were no injuries in the town. This left Cross puzzled, and he asked about the injured individuals he had witnessed in the city. Ryoni explained that the damage caused by the Hydra was minimal, and fortunately, it occurred in a redevelopment area. However, she mentioned that she had heard about a monster stampede on the north side of the city. This stampede had wiped out the B-class adventurers, and it had been a day since the incident. Despite this, the people were already in the process of returning to their normal routines. Ryoni added that while it was always difficult for adventurers to face losses, the reason there were so few injuries was because Cross had bravely stepped in and assisted them. She noted that many people might not remember his efforts due to the effects of the monster's roar, but she encouraged him to be proud of what he had done. Cross shared his feelings of desperation during the attack on the monster, believing that without the presence of others like him, he wouldn't have been able to take such action. Ryoni comforted him, reassuring him that it wasn't about their presence, but about his own actions that mattered. She patted him on the back, emphasizing the significance of his bravery. Ryoni pointed out that despite having all zeros in his abilities, Cross had managed to defeat the monster, attempting to encourage him. Cross questioned whether it was genuinely good for her to say such things about him. After some contemplation, Ryoni found herself feeling a bit embarrassed for her earlier words. Ryoni admitted to feeling embarrassed about asking Cross to be her apprentice. She mentioned that she had heard from Solaria that Cross had been expelled from his school and felt certain that he didn't have anywhere else to go. With hesitation, Ryoni extended an invitation to Cross, asking him to come with her. Cross was shocked by the incredible opportunity of becoming an apprentice to an S-class adventurer. To him, it felt like a dream, especially considering his zeroed-out status and his previous expulsion from school due to perceived incompetence. Cross initially perceived Ryoni's invitation as a dream, given the surreal circumstances, especially after his encounter with the Hydra. However, as the reality sunk in, he began to question whether it was indeed a dream or a genuine opportunity. Suddenly, a blast rocked the room's door, startling Cross. The explosion occurred because Tolomia and Yudmila were furious with Ryoni for not informing them that Cross had woken up. Yudmila was especially angry because she felt that Ryoni was trying to claim Cross as her apprentice before anyone else could. Ryoni, too, became alert for a potential confrontation and welcomed their attention. Tolomia and Yudmila surrounded Cross, eagerly explaining the advantages of becoming their apprentices, vying for his attention and loyalty. Yudmila began by highlighting the benefits of becoming a wizard, emphasizing her status as an S-class hunter wizard as a reason for Cross to consider her as a master. On the other hand, Tolomia expressed that she saw qualities in Cross that aligned with her own, making her a suitable choice as a master. She pitched the idea of him becoming her apprentice as a high-end dark priest and an apprentice of an S-class hunter. Both offered compelling reasons for Cross to choose them. Tensions escalated quickly as Ryoni shouted for Yudmila and Tolomia to wait for their turn. 
Yudmila responded with anger, insisting that she would be the one to educate Cross. Tolomia tried to mediate by asking both of them to be silent. However, the situation grew increasingly heated as all three girls became furious with one another, displaying hostile intentions towards each other. As an earthquake shook the area, causing concern among the citizens, Cross realized the urgency of the situation. Feeling the need to take action, he made a decision. In an effort to bring unity and resolve the tension among the three girls, he chose to become the apprentice of all of them. Cross boldly declared his desire to become the apprentice of all three of them. This announcement caught the attention of the trio, and they listened to his words. Rioni then added that with this decision, Cross had the potential to become the strongest individual ever. Yudmila chimed in, suggesting a friendly competition among them to see who could train Cross the best. Tolomia agreed, believing that it would be a straightforward task with all of them working together. With enthusiasm, the three girls prepared to take Cross on as their apprentice and happily welcomed him into their ranks. Cross found it difficult to believe that he was going to be the apprentice of the most formidable trio in the world. Overwhelmed by the moment, he introduced himself and shared that his class was Telomia Jobless, Telomia signifying his lack of a specific role or class designation. Cross expressed his concern about lacking any particular talents and worried that he might not meet their expectations. He promised to give his best effort, even though he couldn't fully grasp his situation. He likened his position to the feeling that he had to win over all three of them before anything else could happen. Adding a touch of humor to the moment, Cross had been as joyful as ever. Just the day before, he had been expelled from his school and had also left the orphanage where he had been taken care of. However, today, he managed to become an apprentice of 3S class adventurers. All that remained was his training. During his training, the trio of girls competed amongst themselves to be the first to become his mentor. However, they managed to resolve this among themselves without involving Cross, and his training commenced. Cross arrived at the location where he was to receive his training. When he reached the palace, he was awestruck by its beauty. Rioni noticed his reaction and asked why he was acting that way. Cross simply replied that it was nothing, he was just captivated by the palace's beauty. Rioni and Tolomia thought it was an excellent location for their practice and managed to convince the owner to sell it to them. Cross was astonished as his masters purchased a mansion under the guise of training, revealing the trio's significant financial power. Following this, Rioni became furious at Tolomia's presence, as they had previously decided that Rioni would be the first to train Cross. Tolomia smiled and explained that she had come there to ensure Rioni wouldn't engage in any mischievous activities. Initially, Rioni was extremely angry upon hearing Tolomia's explanation. However, she chose to ignore her and instructed Cross to prepare for their practice. Cross focused intently on learning. Observing his dedication, Rioni advised him to stay calm, assuring him that if his progress wasn't satisfactory, she would employ her draconian secret technique to boost it. She also mentioned that the townspeople might come after them, but she had a plan to make it appear as though they were departing for the sake of others. Tolomia joined the conversation and explained that she wanted to utilize the sacred sealed treasure as long as Cross became strong enough before its existence became known to the world. Upon hearing all of this, Cross attempted to confirm if it was a joke, but both girls stared at him and then burst into laughter. Rioni eventually asked everyone to be quiet and commence the training session, while Cross still couldn't shake the feeling that it might all be a jest. Cross swung his sword toward Rioni, but she effortlessly parried it with just one hand. Cross felt tense, and Rioni explained that she understood he had faced difficulties in his training so far, something common for those who were considered weak in adventure school. Cross was surprised and asked Rioni how she knew so much about him. Rioni explained that she could deduce it from the way he wielded his sword. She added that it might have been due to his inherent qualities and the stress of his first day, but the primary issue was that he had been constantly told he was weak, affecting both his body and mind. Rioni pointed at Cross and remarked that he was the type of boy who underestimated himself and was so afraid of counterattacking that he might end up hurting himself in a state of panic and fear. Upon hearing Rioni's observation, Cross began to recall memories from his past, particularly the time when his school friends teased him for losing to a nine-year-old girl. He remembered his determination to practice and at least acquire one skill, but when the results came in, everything was still at zero. The result of Cross's training surprised everyone present, as he turned out to be the first person who hadn't gained any skill and was among the rare few without a class. This reminded him of the time he was facing expulsion from his previous school. Solaria then advised him that it might be painful and dangerous for him to continue down this path, suggesting that he should consider another profession. In the present, Cross provided his explanation, 
mentioning that Miss Solaria had already informed him that without a job, he couldn't pursue a career as an adventurer. Hearing this, Rioni felt a bit concerned about Cross's situation. She attempted to boost his confidence by explaining that he hadn't received a solid foundation, and he wasn't reaching even half of his potential due to the atrophying effect it had on him, causing him to slip in his practice and fall into a vicious cycle. Rioni emphasized that her training wouldn't be effective unless Cross stopped hesitating in combat with others. She then dropped her sword, assumed a fighting stance, and invited Cross to join her in enjoying the act of fighting. Cross felt tense at the thought of fighting with Rioni. She brought out a bag of swords and selected one to give to him. She instructed him to attack her with the sword, but Cross was confused and concerned about the sharpness of the blade and the potential for injury. Rioni misinterpreted Cross's concerns, thinking he was afraid of hurting her with his slashes. She asked Tolomia to lower her defense to accommodate this, but Cross clarified that he didn't mean that. Rioni then realized that he was worried about her getting wounded during their practice. Rioni praised Cross for his kindness but criticized him for potentially becoming naive because of it. She then called out to Yudmila, leaving Cross curious about why she was summoning her at that moment. Yudmila approached the window and inquired about the reason for being called, mentioning that she was busy with preparation work. Rioni instructed Yudmila to attack her, and Yudmila used the edge stone technique, causing a large ice stone to fall on Rioni. Cross was shocked by this turn of events, but Yudmila and Tolomia remained calm. In a tense state, Cross shouted Rioni's name to check on her condition. Cross inquired whether what they had just done was all right. Tolomia assured him that it was fine because the house had a soundproof blessing, ensuring that the noise wouldn't escape the mansion. However, Cross reiterated that it wasn't the noise that had made him anxious. The fog cleared, and Rioni emerged, demonstrating to Cross that she was unharmed and assuring him that he wouldn't hurt her even if he were to strike her with the sword. Cross was in complete shock, seeing her perfectly fine. Cross felt a bit relieved, but Rioni reiterated that if he could learn to attack an unarmed high-ranking adventurer like her, he wouldn't hesitate to attack anyone in the world. She encouraged Cross to continue with his attacks. Cross began attacking Rioni with all his might, and Rioni kept praising him in various ways. Tolomia, noticing Rioni's enthusiastic praise, jokingly commented that Rioni seemed like a pervert. This remark infuriated Rioni, and she angrily told Tolomia to shut up. Cross grew tired from the training and lay down near a tree to rest. To his surprise, Tolomia transferred some of her own willpower and stamina to him, rejuvenating him. Tolomia then inquired about his condition, asking if this level of energy replenishment was satisfactory. Rioni acknowledged that Cross's training was about enjoying fighting, so being too harsh on him wasn't beneficial. She provided him with food and water and encouraged him to fully recover. As the evening approached, Rioni called an end to the day's training. Rioni advised Cross not to do anything else but rest for the remainder of the day. Cross followed her advice, taking a relaxing hot bath in their swimming pool. When he went to have dinner, he was astonished by the abundance of food. Yudmila revealed that she was in charge of preparing the meals and assured him that everything was in order. Cross wondered if all the food was free for him. Rioni encouraged him to eat, explaining that it was also a form of training because food played a crucial role in becoming stronger. Cross took his first bite and was amazed by the deliciousness. He proceeded to eat as much as he could. Yudmila suddenly stands up and asks Cross to follow her instructions. They enter a room, and Cross wonders why they are inside it. Yudmila then prepares for sleep and asks Cross to do the same, lying down with his face down. Upon hearing her request, Cross became tense as he tried to comprehend what she had asked of him. Yudmila clarified that she wasn't requesting him to remove his undergarments, so she simply asked him to take off his t-shirt and lie down. Cross reluctantly agreed, although he still found it embarrassing. Cross then lay down and was about to inquire about what Yudmila intended to do. Suddenly, he felt a soothing sensation on his back, realizing that Yudmila was applying lotion to help him recover his stamina and enhance his magical abilities. While giving Cross a massage, Yudmila shared that individuals who might be currently unemployed could face challenges in leveling up. However, they possess the unique ability to acquire knowledge from various fields, potentially making them jacks of all trades with persistent effort. The only drawback was that the learning process was notably slow. Yudmila then cast a spell and inquired about Cross's sensations, similar to how she and Rioni felt after using magic. She mentioned that if they repeated this daily, his sensations would improve, making it easier for him to acquire skills. Unbeknownst to Cross, Yudmila's true intention was to create a skin-to-skin -skin connection, awakening feelings of love. During the massage, Cross began to feel a strange sensation. 
When the massage came to an end, he thanked Yudmila for her kindness. Yudmila, in turn, advised him to get as much rest as possible. On his way back to his own room, Cross couldn't help but think about the stimulation he might experience from daily massages by someone as beautiful as Yudmila. Cross followed the advice and went into his room, lying down to sleep as everyone had suggested. However, as he closed his eyes and started to drift off, he was suddenly jolted awake. To his shock, he found Tolomia covering his mouth with her hand. Tolomia quickly apologized for surprising Cross and then hugged him as they both lay down. Cross, still feeling tense, inquired about her actions. Tolomia explained that it was a way to reward him for all the hard work he had been putting in, and she considered it a necessary gesture. Tolomia proceeded to use her drain magic and advised Cross that unless he used his full power during training, his growth would be slow. Cross began to wonder if she was draining his mana during this process. Tolomia added that she could accelerate the process significantly, but for that, they would need to be close enough. Tolomia requested that Cross remain still as she continued her drain magic, elaborating on its benefits. However, their intimate moment was abruptly interrupted when someone pulled Tolomia away from Cross. To her surprise, it was Rioni, who was standing there with a furious expression. Rioni explained that she had a bad feeling and decided to check what was happening, now demanding an explanation for Tolomia's actions. Tolomia retorted, asking Rioni not to interfere because she was using the drain magic to siphon Cross's mana. Rioni confirmed that it could have been accomplished with just one finger, and she questioned whether Tolomia was unaware that what she was doing was essentially a couple's activity. Tolomia laughed in response, accusing Rioni of being immature. However, Rioni was clearly angered and instructed Tolomia to be quiet before using her magic. Meanwhile, Cross found himself deep in thought, pondering whether it was appropriate for him to continue training in this manner. The scene shifted to the next morning, where Rioni asked Cross about his thoughts. Cross expressed his concern that as an S-class adventurer, others might be tough on him. Rioni agreed with his worries and went on to clarify that it was a misconception that people would automatically become stronger just by being around someone else. Rioni explained that a teacher who was harsh without understanding a student's situation was, in her opinion, a third-rate human being. She acknowledged that Cross had indeed faced challenging situations and broken down some barriers, but emphasized that there wasn't a daily routine for such growth. Rioni reassured Cross, acknowledging that they were aware of his unemployment at the time of selection but urged him not to worry because they were all committed to helping him improve. As three days passed in training, Cross began to feel more at ease. However, on the fourth day, during a battle with Rioni, he suddenly experienced a sensation of becoming incredibly light. Curious about the newfound feeling, Cross asked Rioni for an explanation. She revealed that it was the sensation of using magic. Intrigued by this, Cross decided to swing his sword again, but this time something unusual happened. Witnessing the change, Rioni asked Cross to show his status plate. As they examined Cross's status plate, he felt overwhelmed by the sudden skill gains. Rioni explained that he not only acquired new skills but also obtained a clear-cut skill that enhanced his sword by imbuing it with magic, significantly improving its abilities. They further explained that Cross had gained three skills of compensation, and they praised him for this achievement. Cross was curious about the nature of these skills, and Rioni clarified that they essentially boosted their stats. However, for Cross, whose base stats were ordinary, each skill would provide only a minor increase of one or two points. Rioni went on to explain the speciality of Cross's Telomia Jobless Telomia class, highlighting its ability to acquire basic skills from all classes. She believed that he could eventually acquire all compensation skills, but cautioned that, given his initial stats of all zeros, relying solely on compensation skills wouldn't be sufficient. However, both of them were delighted because the outcome aligned with their plan. Cross felt immense happiness, realizing that what he was experiencing with the sword and the changes in his body were not a dream but a tangible reality. Despite having all zero stats and just a basic skill, he cherished the newfound sensations. With a joyful smile, he looked at all the girls who had been supporting him in his journey. Rioni couldn't help but laugh at Cross's excitement, but she quickly praised him for achieving four abilities at once. She attributed this success to his dedication and hard work during training, which had surpassed their expectations. She commended him, saying that while they were already awesome, he had become an equally remarkable person. Rioni explained that since Cross had acquired a combat skill, their focus would now shift to strengthening it. Cross agreed to this plan, but Rioni felt the need to share something important with him before he got too comfortable. Rioni cautioned Cross that his skills were still not as strong as others, and she wanted him to keep that in mind. She then surprised him by requesting a real fight. 
Cross became tense and sought clarification, asking if she meant a fight with a monster. Ryoni reassured Cross that she would find opponents of a similar level for their fight, and promptly disappeared to search for such individuals. Cross, however, tried to stop her, expressing his concern that he hadn't even defeated a horned rabbit yet making him doubt his ability to face a monster. Tolomia attempted to offer encouragement by explaining the importance of gaining confidence through defeating a real monster. However, Cross disagreed with her, pointing out that he was still at level 1 despite acquiring some skills. He emphasized that all he had done so far was swing his sword at an unarmed Ryoni during their training sessions. Cross began to feel more hopeful, thinking that with what he had learned from Ryoni, he might be able to defeat some rabbits. However, Tolomia interrupted to inform him that Ryoni had returned. When Ryoni reappeared, she brought with her a massive monster, leaving Cross wide-eyed with surprise. Cross felt a surge of anxiety and asked about the size of the monster, considering it for testing his sword. However, he soon learned that it was a two-eyed snake, a dangerous creature even for level 1 adventurers. The situation became more challenging than he had anticipated. Cross tried to explain that with his current power, he could only handle defeating some horned rabbits, but Ryoni seemed to misinterpret his words, thinking he was ready for a challenge of this magnitude. Cross became increasingly frightened by the large snake and asked Ryoni about her earlier statement regarding not being too hard on him. There, Cross realized that there had been no possibility of him defeating the monstrous creature with such a high risk. Ryoni assured him that he would be able to accomplish it now. His consciousness was diminishing rapidly. Suddenly, the snake ensnared Cross within its tail. Ryoni shared that the snake's eyes were capable of confusing and constricting their prey, so Cross needed to be cautious. Hearing this, Cross shouted in fear, wishing that she had informed him about this earlier. Now, he began to contemplate what he needed to do with the snake in order to escape from its grasp. Cross then bit the snake at its eyes. The snake, in pain, released its grip on Cross and howled in agony. Cross realized that the snake's weak point was its eyes, so he attempted to attack them again. However, the snake was incredibly fast, darting around rapidly to evade his strikes. Cross began contemplating his options in that situation. Suddenly, the snake started rolling around him. Cross observed the snake's clockwise rotation and decided to counter it. Employing his skill, Tolomia clear-cut. Tolomia he executed a single powerful swing, severing every eye of the snake in one swift motion. Finally, the snake was defeated, leaving Tolomia and Ryoni in awe. Cross, witnessing their amazement, reassured himself, questioning whether he had truly accomplished it. Ryoni agreed, acknowledging Cross's power, but she also pointed out that his choice of weapons and his vulnerabilities often left him exposed. She also pointed out that once Cross realized it wasn't as difficult as he initially thought, he had managed to defeat the snake quite easily. Tolomia praised him by patting Cross, and Ryoni expressed her happiness that Cross had successfully defeated the snake which served as a formidable opponent for the test run. The scene then shifted inside the mansion, where Cross shared his experience. He explained that when he examined his surroundings, he noticed inscriptions of various skills. He described how he had defeated the snake using those skills, and for him, it felt like a dream because he had never before defeated a horn rabbit or any similar opponent. Yudmila expressed her happiness that Cross was achieving results sooner than she had anticipated. Cross then apologized for his earlier ramblings. Yudmila mentioned her understanding of his excitement and offered him a cup of something to drink before every night of massage. Cross curiously inquired about the medicinal wine. Yudmila explained that it was a special blend designed to aid in the development of magic and compensation skills. However, she revealed that she had created it specifically for Cross with the intention of making him the perfect match for her. The next day, the practice continued, and Ryoni was teaching Cross with great enthusiasm. She emphasized the importance of focusing on everything he did, especially during his attacks, as it would strengthen the connection between his magic and movements. Cross happily engaged in the training, eager to improve his skills. On the other side, Ryoni and Tolomia engaged in a conversation about Cross. Ryoni observed that Cross seemed happier compared to how he was before. Tolomia agreed and mentioned that she believed his confidence had grown significantly after successfully defeating the snake. Ryoni cautioned that while overconfidence wasn't advisable, having too little confidence wasn't good either, especially since it appeared that some of Cross's classmates were teasing him. Tolomia added that many of Cross's classmates might not be skilled swordsmen themselves, suggesting that their opinions shouldn't be a measure of Cross's abilities. Ryoni disagreed with Tolomia, stating that she might not be aware of everything. She mentioned that the ringleader of the orphanage, a child named Jaisel, was renowned as a once-in-a-decade talent. 
Ryoni had heard that Jaisel possessed a total of 10 initial skills. After their training session concluded, they all examined Cross's status plate. Cross felt a surge of happiness upon discovering that he had acquired additional skills, and that some of his existing skills had reached level 3. Ryoni found it quite intriguing that even without a specific job, Cross was progressing remarkably well. She realized that setting a motivating goal for him would be a wise choice to further his development. Ryoni asked for Cross's opinion, and he nervously expressed his preference for short-term goals. Ryoni tried to pique his interest by mentioning something or someone he might want to defeat. Cross had something in mind but hesitated to share. Ryoni reassured him that they wouldn't laugh and encouraged him to speak up. Cross, feeling relieved, finally shared his thoughts about the reinstatement exam. Both Ryoni and Tolomia reacted strangely to his revelation. Cross acknowledged that it might seem odd, given the company of talented individuals and a luxurious lifestyle, but his dream was to study at an adventurer's school. Ryoni inquired about the specific reason behind Cross's dream. He proceeded to share his personal experience of meeting the hero Elysia for the first time. Elysia had saved his village, and ever since that day, Cross had aspired to become an adventurer capable of protecting people. This was the driving force behind his decision to enroll in the school. Tolomia inquired whether there was a chance that Cross might have developed feelings for that girl Elysia, but Cross flatly denied it, believing it wasn't possible for someone like him to approach a heroic figure like her. Tolomia pondered whether this unattainable admiration for Elysia was the reason behind Cross's willingness to risk his life for her. Tolomia engaged in a private conversation with Ryoni, expressing concern that aside from the hero girl, the school was filled with other girls, which seemed to make Cross feel shy. Tolomia attempted to change the subject, but unexpectedly, Ryoni agreed, suggesting that going to school was indeed a good idea. Ryoni explained her reasoning, noting that engaging in mock battles exclusively with the girls could make Cross seem unusual. She emphasized that facing different types of opponents would be valuable. Moreover, she reminded him that someday he would have to pass the reinstatement exam to become an adventurer, so it made sense to attend school for better preparation. Cross was delighted to hear about the next step, and Ryoni advised him to take the reinstatement exam. Tolomia appeared tense about Ryoni's decision, but Ryoni reassured her, asking her to stay calm and allow their apprentice to pursue his dream. She also hinted at having a promising idea. Ryoni explained that now that everything was decided, Cross needed to learn a new skill for the exam. Cross was puzzled about this extra skill. Ryoni revealed that it was a secret weapon for him to use during the exam, something that would give him an advantage. The scene shifted to 20 days later, with all of them standing in front of the school. Ryoni noticed that Cross was silent and inquired about the reason. Cross admitted that he was feeling nervous as the time had come. Ryoni expressed happiness, noting that Cross was maturing because he was learning to embrace that tension. Ryoni reassured Cross, telling him that she had faith in his abilities and that they would all keep an eye on him. She encouraged him to show courage and get ready to enter the school for the exam. Cross agreed and headed inside the school for the examination. Ryoni expressed her happiness at the thought of Cross not easily passing the exam. At the entrance to the exam hall, Cross paused and reassured himself that he would be safe, drawing confidence from the skills he had learned from the trio of girls. As Cross entered through the gate, everyone inside the hall was taken by surprise at his presence. They couldn't believe it and started laughing, thinking he had gone crazy. Cross felt tense because he knew the reinstatement exam was a public event, but he hadn't expected this kind of reaction from the public. Suddenly, Cross heard Jaisel asking him why he had chosen her as his opponent. Cross became tense and quickly clarified that he hadn't chosen her. In the audience, Ryoni and Tolomia were engaged in a conversation. Tolomia accused Ryoni of being cruel for setting up a match like that without Cross's knowledge. Ryoni explained that Cross was going to face one of the best fighters, and it was an opportunity for him to boost his self-esteem by defeating her. However, Jaisel was furious with Cross for seemingly looking down on her, vowing to defeat him so thoroughly that he would never want to become an adventurer again even suggesting she might beat him to the point of severe harm. Cross started to recall everything he had heard during his school days. Everyone always excluded him, claiming that he obstructed their training. They often wondered what kind of plea he might make in front of monsters to ensure his safety. They had also told him that he couldn't become an adventurer, and many didn't want to see him around. 
Suddenly, he heard the voice of the matchmaker and was brought back to his current life. The matchmaker announced both contestants and requested them to step forward. On the other hand, Tolomia commented that Rioni's methods and approach were quite primitive. Rioni nervously inquired about the type of young man she aimed to create. Unbeknownst to them, Solaria stood behind, pondering their conversation, but they decided to head home as quickly as possible. The match began, and Giselle wasted no time, initiating her attack with the skill Tolomia mow down. Tolomia in response, Cross employed the Tolomia body hardening Tolomia skill, but when Giselle struck, he was thrown away. Observing this, the spectators began to wonder if the match had concluded, and there was a possibility that Cross might be seriously injured or even dead. Meanwhile, Solaria contemplated that it had been a month since their classes had been assigned, and having a remarkable student clash with a less remarkable one seemed quite unfair. Solaria couldn't help but question the decision involving the trio of girls. The matchmaker inquired about Cross's condition, but to everyone's astonishment, Cross was still conscious. The entire arena was filled with shock, and Giselle asked about the actions Cross had taken. Suddenly, Giselle realized that Cross must have learned some defensive skills. This realization fueled her anger, and she launched another aggressive attack, determined to test whether Cross could withstand her when she was truly serious. Giselle employed the Tolomia Twisted Lunge of Tolomia skill to attack, but to her astonishment, Cross skillfully evaded each of her attacks one after another. Cross realized that he was no longer as frightened as he had been before, and he noticed that he hadn't been harmed by the blow Giselle had landed on him a few minutes ago. It was all thanks to Rioni's training. Cross then activated the physical enhancement technique to hold his ground. Witnessing this, Giselle grew even more furious, unable to comprehend how he was still standing. This time, Giselle unleashed her full fury on Cross. It became clear that Cross had been following Rioni's instructions, which involved frequently activating and deactivating his agility skill as it proved more effective than maintaining a constant 80 enhancement speed. He couldn't help but feel a sense of happiness as he remembered the moments of training with Rioni. Out of nowhere, Jaisel closed in on him and launched an attack. But this time Cross retaliated with the Tolomia clear cut Tolomia skill. Jaisel was taken aback, shocked that Cross was using an offensive skill and that his movements were contrary to his usual stats, forcing her to defend herself. The audience was left astonished by the sudden turn of events in the match. They couldn't believe that Giselle had to resort to using a defensive technique against the supposedly inexperienced Cross. Cross continued his attack, and this time Giselle found herself dodging his moves, still in shock. Cross realized that he needed to change his approach because landing a single blow on a formidable adventurer like Giselle wouldn't be enough, and continuing in this manner would likely lead to his defeat. It was then that he remembered the extra skill that Rioni had shared with him. Rioni had explained that this skill was a potent combination of various skills, and it was crucial for Cross to use it. No matter how skilled he was, his all-zero stats would prevent him from winning without it. Rioni advised him to focus on building up his firepower to overcome his opponents. She also shared a skill that, if used wisely, could land a hit on the opponent with equal power. Following her guidance, Cross delivered a small but effective blow with his sword against Giselle. Jaisel, growing even more furious, warned Cross not to try anything else, threatening to kill him. She prepared to unleash her most powerful attack, Tolomia Bisect. Tolomia it was at this moment that Cross recalled Rioni's advice about having the guts to face his opponent's intentions without fear, just as he had shown during the fight with the Hydra. With full determination, Cross unleashed a powerful combination of skills. He initiated the Tolomia Clear Cut Tolomia attack incorporating the Tolomia Emergency Evasion Tolomia skill, and then added the final touch with Tolomia Cross Counter. Tolomia the fusion of these skills proved to be overwhelming, and he managed to defeat Giselle with this incredible attack, sending her flying. Solaria and the spectators were left in shock by this unexpected turn of events. The outcome of the fight created a sensation among everyone, leaving them wondering how an all-zero student like Cross could defeat the renowned Giselle. Rioni couldn't help but laugh, finding joy in Cross's victory. The matchmaker announced that Cross had successfully passed the reinstatement exam. Cross, who had been in such tension, didn't even realize it until the announcement. Afterward, he started celebrating his well-deserved win. Cross then approached the matchmaker to confirm that he had indeed passed the exam and could attend school. Jaisel, as she woke up, fumed with anger, refusing to accept her loss to someone she deemed Telomia jobless. Telomia she accused him of cheating, but as she spoke, she suddenly fainted. Cross, concerned about Jaisel's health, inquired about her well-being and ensured that they called a healer to attend to her. 
After the healing, outside the exam hall, Rayoni and Tolomi appraised him for his outstanding performance. Finally passing the exam, Cross expressed his gratitude to all of them, recognizing that his dream of winning and returning to school had become a reality thanks to their support and guidance. Rayoni suggested that Cross should check his status plate, as his skills were likely to have improved significantly after such intense matches. When Cross examined his status plate, he was delighted to see tangible growth in his skills. However, Rayoni and Tolomia, upon inspecting his status plate, became concerned. Rayoni questioned whether Cross was growing too rapidly and extensively, a sentiment that Tolomia shared in agreement. While Cross was ecstatic and celebrating his rapid skill growth by jumping around, Rayoni and Tolomia found it almost unbelievable and impossible for someone to progress so quickly. They watched his jubilant celebration with a sense of wonder and amazement. The scene shifted to a mansion as Cross headed to school. While on his way, he noticed Yudmila and greeted her warmly upon her return. Yudmila felt delighted but also became puzzled, wondering where he was headed. When Yudmila arrived, she shared that she had encountered Cross frolicking around. However, she speculated that he must have been in training with Rayoni this time. Rayoni greeted her first. Yudmila then inquired if Rayoni ever got tired. But Rayoni denied it and revealed that Cross had successfully passed the entrance test, officially enrolling in the adventurer's school. Yudmila was taken aback, as she had heard that the exam was quite challenging, making it seem impossible for Cross to succeed. Rayoni then presented a copy of Cross's status plate to Yudmila and asked for her opinion after she had seen it. Upon viewing the status plate, Yudmila also became anxious. Meanwhile, in the midst of their conversation, Rayoni inquired about the growth rate of elf magic, as Yudmila had previously been teaching it. However, Yudmila was growing increasingly furious, and suddenly, she unleashed a flame burst attack causing a small area to scorch. Tolomia and Rayoni both questioned her reasons for doing so, as their clothes had also been singed in the process. Yudmila then accused both of them of using their secret items, and Rayoni revealed her secret treasure, the Dragonair, while Tolomia combined it with her church's seal artifact. Rayoni and Tolomia were both anxious as Yudmila had misunderstood their intentions. Yudmila, still furious, reiterated her demand that they shouldn't lie, emphasizing that Cross's growth rate was undoubtedly high, so using these treasures was unnecessary. She stressed that using them this early would set a terrible example for Cross. Yudmila also expressed her belief that she should have been the one to teach Cross first. However, Rayoni attempted to soothe her by suggesting that using the treasures might lead to something even greater. Yudmila then inquired about the reason behind Cross's unusual growth. Rayoni responded by nervously scratching her head, acknowledging that the situation was indeed perplexing. In response, Yudmila reassured them that she believed they were telling the truth and had not used any treasures on Cross. Rayoni explained that they had sought her opinion because she was the one who had taken him on as an apprentice. Yudmila also admitted her inability to comprehend how such rapid growth could occur, finding it unbelievable. They all gathered to discuss the matter further. Yudmila added that it was nearly impossible for a child to progress at such a rate unless they were of noble blood. Typically, proficiency levels only increased by one level in a span of two weeks. Rayoni was surprised to learn that the normal rate of progression for humans was significantly slower. Tolomia expressed sympathy for humans, considering their limitations. Yudmila suggested that they needed to mentor someone who lacked their knowledge and experience. She then downplayed Cross's rapid growth as nothing more than an anomaly. The scene shifted to the Almeria Royal Adventure School. In a classroom, a teacher was instructing all the students, and every student's attention was fixed on Cross. On the other hand, Cross was filled with joy, contemplating mock battles with fellow schoolmates, knowing that it would enhance his skills and make his training with Rayoni much more manageable. Suddenly, Cross turned around and noticed Geisel glaring at him with intense anger. Cross felt a wave of fear since he was aware that Geisel was still upset with him. Soon, they moved on to the practical portion of their class, and the teacher instructed them to find a partner of similar skill level for a mock battle. As Cross attempted to pair up with someone, he was met with a flurry of apologies as everyone hurriedly fled, unwilling to be his partner. Cross grew increasingly anxious, realizing that this situation was far from ideal. The session ended, leaving him deeply troubled, as the very reason for his attendance at the school was now compromised due to everyone avoiding him over his dispute with Geisel. Cross spotted Geisel and attempted to approach her to discuss the events of the previous day. However, Geisel shot him an angry glare. Just as Cross hesitated about what to do next, some boys intervened, cautioning him not to provoke her and suggesting that he leave. Cross was uncertain about retreating when suddenly another person arrived and inquired about the commotion. 
everyone present was taken aback, and in cross eyes we could discern surprise as she gazed at the unknown girl. The scene shifted back to the trio of girls in their mansion, where Yumila presented an item. Rioni inquired about the item, and Yumila explained that it was a luxurious item often used by merchants, capable of revealing comprehensive information about various things. They decided to use it to examine Cross's status plate, and when they did so, all three of them were taken aback by what they discovered. In a shocked tone, Rioni asked if it was a skill concealment. Yudmila clarified that it wasn't merely concealment, it was an advanced skill used for viewing hidden information. Tolomia became tense, wondering why someone would employ such an advanced skill on Cross. Yudmila concurred with Tolomia that they were in the dark about the situation, but it was undeniably strange. Rioni advised both of them to exercise caution, emphasizing the seriousness of the matter. Yudmila decided to proceed with a careful analysis. Rioni then urged everyone to keep it a secret from Cross until they could reach a conclusive understanding. As they delved into their investigation, Tolomia appeared to be preoccupied with another concern. Yudmila inquired about her anxiety, and Tolomia expressed her worry for Cross, particularly about the possibility of him being discovered by someone else at school. The scene returned to the school, where the arrival of the mysterious Miss Alicia left everyone surprised and curious about her presence. Geisel, the descendant of the brave, asked her about the reason for her visit to the school. Cross, feeling somewhat shy, was also taken aback by her unexpected appearance. However, it soon became apparent that she had come to meet with Cross. In school, everyone had made assumptions about her arrival, and some individuals had praised her beauty. To everyone's surprise, she walked over to Cross and approached him. We observed teary eyes in her as she stood there. Seeing Alicia so close to himself, Cross felt shy and became puzzled about why she was standing so near to him. Alicia then inquired about his health and displayed happiness at seeing him there. She expressed her joy at seeing him, explaining that she had been concerned because the S-rank trio of girl adventurers had not contacted her for some time. To her relief, she had heard a day before that someone matching his description had passed the reinstatement exam. As she held his hand gently, Cross felt as though his soul had left his body at that moment. Everyone present was shocked to witness the descendant crying for the class-less guy, Cross. Alicia noticed that they were drawing the attention of everyone, and Cross agreed with her. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Alicia grabbed Cross and they disappeared from the scene. Everyone there was surprised to see that both of them had vanished, and jealousy arose towards Cross, as he seemed incredibly lucky. Here, we learn about Alicia, who, at the age of 16, had achieved the prestigious rank of a swordmaster. In this community, every brave descendant had attended the adventure school for generations, seeking a suitable partner to ensure the strength of their future offspring. Other boys were contemplating the idea of changing their names, hoping to have a chance or luck similar to Cross. The scene then shifted to Alicia and Cross, where Cross expressed his gratitude for saving him from the others. He also shared that his thanks weren't just for the present moment but extended to another time when she had saved him before this. Cross also mentioned that after that incident, he had always wanted to become an adventurer. However, Alicia interrupted him, insisting that she should be the one to express gratitude. Cross was left confused by her words. Alicia then recounted the day of the monster attack when Cross had fainted. She revealed that the trio of girls had been talking about him, acknowledging that he had risked himself to save her. She further explained that she had wanted to help him, but the trio of girls had advised her not to worry, assuring her that they would take care of Cross. This led Alicia to focus on dealing with other monsters, and sadly, she never heard about Cross again after that. Cross came to understand that Rioni and the others had forgotten their promises. Alicia confessed that she had been searching for him everywhere to apologize for all the troubles he had faced and to express her gratitude for his selfless act of saving her. She joyfully declared that Cross had her gratitude and offered to help him with anything he might need, encouraging him to let her know his wishes. Cross became tense in that moment and insisted that he wasn't the only one who had saved Alicia. It was also thanks to the trio of girls who had assisted. However, he abruptly stopped speaking, recalling Rioni's warning not to reveal anything about their training, as everyone believed they had disappeared from town. Cross's sudden apology made Alicia uneasy, but he continued to apologize, admitting that her mention of the trio of girls had made him anxious. Alicia, however, didn't accept the apology as she remained unsatisfied. She still wanted to offer some form of assistance. Cross began to wonder what Alicia wanted to hear from him, feeling increasingly anxious. Suddenly, he recalled something and confided in Alicia about a girl in school who was very angry with him. He admitted that he didn't know how to make her forgive him and asked if Alicia, being a girl, could help in any way. After some thought, Alicia suggested that offering a better snack might help. 
Cross was a bit perplexed by her response, but Alicia reassured him that sometimes, such situations could be eased with delicious snacks. Upon hearing this, Cross interpreted that Alicia must be quite a food enthusiast. Cross inquired about the different snack options he could consider, and Alicia explained that it wasn't just about the snack itself, so she suggested they go shopping together to choose something. This suggestion left Cross stunned, as he hadn't expected that they would go shopping together for this purpose. Alicia also realized that her outfit might draw attention, so she asked Cross to wait for her in front of the church plaza. The scene shifted to the plaza, where Cross stood waiting in a tense and embarrassed manner, self-conscious of the curious looks from everyone around as he was going shopping with Alicia. Suddenly, Alicia arrived and touched Cross from behind to get his attention, which startled him. Cross asked her about the time of her arrival, and Alicia apologized for startling him. She explained that in this coat, she wouldn't be recognized until people came closer to her. Cross, intrigued, asked if it was a magic coat. Alicia explained that the coat wouldn't work on her bodyguards, so they needed to be cautious since she had come there secretly. Cross was slightly shocked and was about to ask something, but Alicia hushed him and requested that they keep it their secret. She then urged him to go shopping with her. As they headed to the shops, Cross reminded himself to stay relaxed and not become too flustered around her. 